your cult boyfriend asking asking for the first time how many masterpieces can one guy have today i'm talking about lost horizon 1937 a frank capra you guessed it masterpiece seriously how many perfect films uh, can one director have uh, Frank Capra seems to have an endless amount of them. Uh, this is another completely astonishing film. And, and the version I watched wasn't even all there. It was a restored version. It's uh, about 2 hours and 15 minutes long. And it reminded me of most of the available cuts of Eric von Straheim's Greed. Um, which is missing, I think, most of itself. But uh, uh, Lost Horizon is missing, I think, about 25 minutes of material but they found the original soundtrack and for the for the missing visuals they just show still images that um that seem to fit or seem to be from the missing scenes themselves and it even adds that enigmatic quality that lost horizon has because um there are things that are still unseen about frank capra's masterpiece but even in this the slightly very slightly mutilated form it's absolutely perfect and it is a master masterful 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 film and i'm so impressed by it uh lost horizon 1937 is a mystery melodrama that really spoke to the anxieties of its time of the mid to late 30s a world on the brink of another absolutely devastating war Lost Horizon features a utopia, um, a heaven on earth, uh, hidden away from the outside world, from all the noise and all the conflicts of it, called Shangri-La. And in Shangri-La, there are there is no war, there's no strife, there's no crime. Um, th there doesn't even seem to be any sort of a definitive uh, class system. There's no poverty, there's, there's nothing. It's just people living in the most um, utopian, kind of Christianized way possible. Um, and in and, and the most ideal way possible. It's the most idealized uh, utopia that I mean, I've ever seen on film. Um, because it works for everybody. Um, except for one person, George. Uh, Ronald Coleman, our main character's brother, George, never liked it. He had too much of the... Um, <sighs> of he had too much of the modern um anxiety within him to really be at peace within shangri-la i mean he was already like far too corrupted by by the modern anxieties of the time but people watching that film i mean specifically they're thinking a holocaust could never happen here a world war would, would never interfere with this kind of tranquility that i'm seeing here but Capra is never without his ambivalence, without his moral uh, sophistication, because this kind of utopia um, comes at a cost. I mean, there is a penalty for Ronald Coleman doubting Shangri-La for a moment, because like Margot and um, Ronald Coleman's brother, George, they... Uh, they put doubt in, in our main character's mind about Shangri-La's authenticity. And I think one of the greatest, um, at least American fears, or maybe just Western fears, is that um, is, is being conned, is being duped, is being made to look like a mark, and um, will immediately accept uh, any evidence, will entertain any theory to the contrary. Um, when something is seems too good to be true. I think that that's the ethos really of of the cynic at uh at every kind of cynic from every kind of age. Uh, the ethos of of the cynic has always been if something's too good to be true, then it isn't true or then it normally isn't true. But the penalty for that sort of doubt is um it turns out Margot was was lying to both George and Ronald Coleman's character. And um, she ages so rapidly um, in the glacial terrain outside of Shangri-La that uh, she dies. And then um, George, George leaps from a cliff and basically kills himself. 
um, removes himself entirely from the plot, and our main character is forced to... Um... <laughs> Capra does supply us with a happy ending, but there is that, that complication that um, he couldn't save his brother, that there is quite a penalty to be made, and also I think the greater complication that, yeah, an idealized utopia, that might be your only answer. Um, that, that might be the only way out of some sort of impending doom is someplace like Shangri-La. Uh, and I think Shangri-La is beautiful in the film. And I, it reminds me of the kind of opulence of like the Griffith or DeMille masterworks, uh, especially the silent era, the uh, silent era masterworks. Um, because this film went so over budget, it almost ruined Columbia Pictures. It put so much strain on Capra's relationship, even with Bob Rifskin, his screenwriting partner. And I think ultimately tore apart the relationship that Capra had, which had always been shaky with Harry Cohn, who ran Columbia Pictures. This film went so far over budget, almost ruined, it almost ruined the company Capra was working for. It took like years and years for this film to make any sort of profit. And um, you can see every dollar spent on screen. Um, there are even entire um, montages, entire um, sequences in this film that use the grammar um, established by the, the silent film medium. Uh, Lost Horizon seems to be a perfect union, a perfect marriage of um, silent era uh, film language and uh, the immediate compositional stylings of, of the sound era. Like, it seems like a perfect marriage of the two because you can see, you can see, um, both at its most intensified, normally in, an, in a, at least in the first decade following um, the advent of sound into the cinema, um, sometimes it feels as if um, sound is, of course, being hyper-focused on while, while the visual uh, grammar of, of film is, um, is, is kind of being neglected. But that's never the case with Capra. But it's kind of like uh, you're so aware of it in Lost Horizon because so much of it does feel... Um, does feel as if it's part of the silent era and not in an antiquated or bygone sort of way but in a really fresh way in a really anxious way in a very mysterious way because sometimes silent films can be the most mysterious ones on the planet almost intrinsically and that kind of um that mystery capra is able to imbibe lost horizon with it and it makes lost horizon such a beautiful masterpiece and with your permission, I'd like to read from the preface of Frank Capra's autobiography. I've never heard anyone talk or write about film in quite this way. Because Lost Horizon is a film of sublime movie magic, and it does feel like a very kind of holy film in the sense that it's um, idealistically mysterious and romantically fatalistic. So let me read from the beginning here, because I've never heard anyone talk about film this way. And this is, this is the kinds of things you have to remember when you're watching a Frank Capra film, that this man thought of film in a way that was hyper-intense. When Eric Gill, one of my heroes, said after his conversion in his autobiography, I invented the Roman Catholic Church. I think I understood him. He discovered values already discovered within himself. When young people discover sex, the experience is so poignantly personal they grant themselves self-issued patents for having invented it. Similarly, I might say, since some 60 films exist that would not exist had I not created them, that I invented motion pictures. Not true. Motion pictures invented me and all other filmmakers. The art invented the artists. The conception of this new and greatest art form comprising and compressing all other art forms into one was slow and laborious. It took the fertilizing sperm some 4,000 years to complete a westward trek of thousands of miles before it found and pierced the ovum of film. That sperm was ejected from the fertile brain of Aristotle in Athens. A square hole in a card projects a round image of the sun on a dark wall. It picked up added genes from the genius of Leonardo da Vinci. 
Camera Obscura, a tiny hole projects the image of any object on the dark wall. Leaving Leonardo, the sperm picked up speed and more genes from the intellects of a Jesuit priest, projected paintings on a screen, a plateau in Belgium and Stamper in Vienna, illusion of motion from paintings on a revolving disc, Daguerre in France, discovered photogenic emulsions, Moybridge in California, sequential still photos of a running horse, George Eastman, celluloid base for emulsions, the Lumieres in France, film projection machines, until finally the sperm found and fertilized the ovum in the brain of the wizard of Menlo Park, Thomas Edison. 4,000 years from desire to conception, but once conceived, the new art, the new art form sprouted, grew up, and flowered in one generation. The, from Edwin S. Porter's The Great Train Robbery, eight minutes, to D.W. Griffith's Intolerance, over two hours. All else that has been added, sound, color, techniques, is embellishment. The overpowering speed of film history has no parallel in human chronology. Like a biblical flood, it swept up all the other arts and spread them generously over the earth. Theaters, studios, creative artists, mushroomed from its teeming delivium. All that we in motion pictures are, have, and do stems from the art itself, from film, the magic carpet. I was one of the privileged. I was allowed to grasp the fringes of this flying rug, pull myself up on it, and ride to adventure. Some ride. Like riding a meteor. You have to remember that that's the way, when you're watching a Capra film, that Capra himself thought of film as his savior as this magical vehicle, this thing that saved him from poverty, this thing that saved him from being a nobody, the thing that made him a someone. That film was probably the most important thing in his life, and not simply in an ad admiration kind of way of, of enjoying the art form itself, but in the idea that film chose him. Film chose him from, from a slew of Ellis Island immigrants. It chose him and went, you... We're going to make you a king, and you're welcome. So Capra was chosen, and in his mind, he was chosen by the magic carpet of film, by the holy power that the apparently the semen of film had in store for him, part of a genealogy that I've never read someone speak about film in that way. And you can see it in, in his best works, in his masterworks, which, I mean, are many. Uh, it happened one night. You can't take it with you. Mr. Deeds goes to town. Lost Horizon, and that's not it. Lost Horizon is completely brilliant. It's a masterpiece. It's so mysterious. It's so well shot. I want to live in Shangri-La. I want to hang out with the High Lama. I want to do so many things. I mean, it... What's so, so tragic is that the modern anxieties of a 1937 audience is easily transposed or transported to ours today. And we still want that kind of utopia. The world still seems on the brink of something catastrophic. It always will seem that way. I mean, there is an ambivalence in this film, because Capra doesn't offer a practical solution here. Ronald Coleman would rather die looking for Shangri-La again than spend another second in, in this real world of vanity and violence. Capra doesn't offer us a real world solution here. Because the real world doesn't have any solutions. And I think Capra's far too sophisticated to be that naive. A lot of people would charge Capra with being naive, but he's not naive. He's not going to offer you a, a, a real world solution when, when the real world is just ridiculing you at every stop. He's going to offer you an idealistic one. Um, he's going to offer you a vision to live up to as opposed to... Um, fold into yourself. Shangri-La. Shangri-La is utopia. Shangri-La is heaven on earth. Shangri-La is an oasis. Shangri-La is film. For Capra. For me. I think for a lot of you watching this video. Film is the place where we can 
escape. Even if it's just for two hours and change, we can escape the, the strife, the anger, the egotism, the narcissism, the tempers of daily life within this ultra modern world and we can we can devote our time our imagination our eyes and our hearts to cinematic alternatives that feature beautiful people doing virtuous things with admirable goals in mind and maybe we can bring a little bit of that as if like a fable or some or some mysterious lesson learned and we can apply it to our ultra modern world and make it just that much more tolerable if everyone did that maybe you can make it ideal eventually Lost Horizon speaks to me on a whole nother level. I think it's wonderfully composed. I think the screenplay is beautiful. I think um, everything about it is perfect. Lost Horizon is another Frank Capra Columbia masterpiece. I've been your cult boyfriend.